Hello and welcome everyone to Synapsel. In our previous lecture, we had discussed about the bilirubin metabolism or the destruction of the bilirubin. Now in today's lecture, we'll utilize that knowledge to discuss about the jaundice and its types. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video, I strongly recommend you to go and watch that video because the bilirubin metabolism forms the basis of this jaundice and the classification of jaundice. Now, I'll consider that you have discussed or studied the topic of bilirubin metabolism. With that said, we'll proceed our lecture with the jaundice. Now, the first question is what is jaundice? Jaundice is actually yellow discoloration of the skin, sclera and the mucous membranes of the whole body. So, yellow discoloration of skin, sclera, mucous membranes of the whole body is the jaundice. Now, why this happens? The reason is increased serum bilirubin or the increased amount of bilirubin within the blood. Now, the question is what is the normal amount of bilirubin in the blood? The normal amount is 0 0.3 to 1 milligram per deciliter. That's the normal amount and if we have increased amount of bilirubin more than this, we'll see the features of jaundice. Now, the bilirubin is of either conjugated or unconjugated. So, we may have the increased unconjugated bilirubin levels or we may have the increased conjugated bilirubin levels or in certain cases, we may have the increased amount of both conjugated as well as unconjugated bilirubin levels. Now, first we'll discuss about the increased amount of the unconjugated bilirubin. The causes behind the increase in the unconjugated bilirubin levels and different diseases leading to the increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin. The first thing is increased hemolysis. Whenever there is increased hemolysis, we will see that the unconjugated bilirubin levels will increase within the blood. Now, what's the reason behind that? We'll go to the basics. See, here's the RBC. For example, due to any disease like hemolytic anemia, we'll have the increased destruction of RBC within the reticular endothelial system. So we have the increased destruction of RBC within the reticular endothelial system. And as the RBC is destroyed, it will release its content that is the hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin will form the heme and the globin. And finally from the heme, due to two enzymatic reactions, we'll get the bilirubin. <coughs> and this bilirubin will obviously go to the blood and we will see the increased amounts of bilirubin within the blood. Now this blood will go to the liver for conjugation. But the reason is why we see the increased amount of bilirubin with the blood, that is, see, we'll explain that over here. For example, if this is a liver, it can conjugate up to a certain level. For example, our liver can conjugate 10 molecules of unconjugated bilirubin per minute. So that's, for example, the normal tendency of our liver. And generally, we have only 5 molecules being formed per minute. Okay, so generally, 5 molecules of bilirubin are being formed per minute and our liver has the maximum tendency to form 10 by the to conjugate 10 molecules of bilirubin. So, this will go to the liver and they will be easily conjugated. That's under normal condition. But under certain conditions of, uh, for example, stress, we'll see the increased breakdown of RBC. For example, now the bilirubin formed is equal to 9 molecules per minute. Okay, but our liver can also conjugate this much amount. So our liver can conjugate up to a certain amount of bilirubin per minute. However, if we have more than, let for example, 10 molecules of unconjugated bilirubin being formed per minute, our liver cannot conjugate the excess amount of those bilirubin molecules. So what will happen? For example, in case of hemolytic anemia, we are having 15 molecules of unconjugated bilirubin being formed per minute. Okay, so we have 15 molecules formed per minute. So our liver can conjugate how much? 10 and the remaining 5 will get accumulated within the blood. So we have the accumulation of 5 molecules of bilirubin each minute and that will always increase, keep on increasing with time. Now the question is, this blood will obviously go to the kidneys. Obviously, for filtration. Then, the, then why we cannot see this bilirubin being excreted via the urine? The answer is simple, that this bilirubin is unconjugated, obviously, and the unconjugated bilirubin is hydrophobic, okay? So the unconjugated bilirubin is hydrophobic, therefore, it cannot 
get excreted into the watery medium of urine. Now there is another question that, that if it is hydrophobic then how it is present in blood? The reason is simple that within blood it is carried by a transport protein that is albumin in the form of the bilirubin albumin complex. So that is the first type that is the increased hemolysis. Now the second type of disease that leads to the increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin is Gilbert syndrome. Now what happens in Gilbert syndrome is we have the decreased amount of UDP glucuronosyl transferase. Now as I told you in my previous lecture that this UDP glucuronosyl transferase is responsible for transferring a molecule of glucuronic acid to bilirubin and thus leading to the conjugation. So UDP glucuronosyl transferase or in short form we can say UGT is responsible for the conjugation of bilirubin. Okay. And if it is reduced then what will happen we will have a reduced conjugation. Now let us uh, take an example that our liver has only the tendency to conjugate six molecules now under the condition of Gilbert syndrome. Okay, So under the condition of Gilbert syndrome our liver can conjugate only six molecules per minute. So under normal conditions the five molecules being produced will be easily conjugated. But under the conditions of stress what will happen the increased amount for example now if the nine molecules are being formed the four molecules will get sorry the three molecules will get accumulated within the each step okay so what will happen in Gilbert syndrome is that the under normal conditions there will be no symptom so under normal conditions we do not have any sim symptom but under the conditions of stress we will see clinical features of jaundice okay right so in Gilbert syndrome we have decreased amount of UGT now the second disease leading to the increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin is the physiological jaundice now what happens during physiological jaundice see we have the in the uh, neonate we have the decreased amount of UGT because the liver is not that much developed therefore we have the decreased or the lower amounts of UGT and also we know that in fetal life we have the increased or the more number of RBCs. Why? Because to get more and more oxygen from the maternal blood we have more RBCs during fetal life. But after we are born those RBCs are broken down. Okay, So we have increased hemolysis and also the liver of the newborn baby is not that much functional because there is decreased amount of UGT enzyme. So there is both increased hemolysis and decreased UGT. Therefore, we will see that there will be the accumulation of unconjugated bilirubin. Now the thing is, within the physiological jaundice, we won't see any complications. Why? Because generally within 4-5 to five days, or in fact within few weeks, what will happen is, the liver will get developed with each day and therefore it will easily get uh, rid of all these bilirubin, increased amount of bilirubin being formed. So that's, that happens in the physiological jaundice. In certain extreme cases, we may require phototherapy. Now what we require, why we require phototherapy? Phototherapy, what it does is, it actually changes the shape of the bilirubin molecule and it converts it uh, from the insoluble to the soluble form. Therefore, what will happen if this bilirubin becomes soluble? Therefore, it can directly go uh, from the blood into the urine and be excreted. Okay. So what it does is it changes the uh, the phototherapy changes the shape of the bilirubin molecule and converts it from the insoluble form to the soluble form. So therefore, we don't need to worry about the physiological jaundice. Now the another thing is krigler najjar syndrome. Now what happens in kegler najjar syndrome, we have the complete absence of UGT. Okay, so we have the complete absence of UGT. And in this case, we do not have any conjugation at all. And the ultimate remedy to get rid of this problem is liver transplant. So we require a liver transplant in order to get rid of this kegler najjar syndrome. So th those are the cases which lead to the increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin in blood. The second condition is increased amount of conjugated bilirubin. The first thing that leads to the increased amount of conjugated bilirubin is Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Now what happens in Dubin-Johnson syndrome? 
In Dubin Johnson syndrome, actually, we have either the absence of MRPT protein or the non-functional MRPT protein. And you know that MRP2 protein is responsible for transporting this bilirubin diglucuronide into the bile canaliculi. And if it's absent, then what will happen? The bilirubin diglucuronide will enter via the MRP3 into the plasma. So when there is absence of what? MRP2, there will be upregulation of MRP3 and this MRP3 will transport the bilirubin diglucuronide into the plasma. We'll also explain it in this picture. See, these are various hepatocytes. This is the bile canaliculi and this is the blood vessel. The MRP2 is responsible for transporting the bilirubin diglucuronide into the bile canaliculi, whereas MRP3 is responsible for transporting the bilirubin diglucuronide into the blood vessel. Generally, it's functional and it's non-functional. But if MRP2 is non-functional, there will be the upregulation of MRP3. Therefore, now there will be the transportation of bilirubin diglucuronide into the blood vessel. Therefore, we will have an increased amount of what? bilirubin diglucuronide in the plasma and now also there is an important thing that as the conjugation has taken place therefore this bilirubin can go to the urine and be excreted in the urine and giving the urine dark color so we'll have the dark colored urine in this condition so that's about the dubin johnson syndrome now the next thing is obstructive jaundice now in obstructive jaundice, due to, for example, gallstone or any other condition, we'll have the obstruction of bile. So obstruction of bile duct, due to which what will happen is there will be the backflow of there will be the backflow of bilirubin diglucuronide. And as it is uh, it goes under the backflow, it will be excreted from the liver into the plasma. Via what? Via MRP through proteins. So if there is backflow of what? bilirubin diglucuronide, it will be transported into the plasma via MRP3. So in obstructive jaundice, we have the blockage of the bile duct which will lead to the backflow and due to this backflow, we will see the increased amount of conjugated bilirubin in blood. Now there is an important thing that in this case, we will also see bile appearing in the blood and also cholesterol because bile contains cholesterol and that will also appear in the blood plasma. Right? After that, we'll discuss about the final condition in which there is increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin and also the conjugated bilirubin. Now, this happens in the condition of viral hepatitis. Now, what will happen in viral hepatitis is there will be the inflammation of hepatocytes and due to which some hepatocytes will be damaged or some hepatocytes will die. So, what will happen is, for example, this hepatocyte will die. And in a normal condition, what we had was, we had these tight junctions which were preventing the transport of the bile, sorry, the bilirubin diglucuronide from the bile canaliculi into the blood. But now, as the cell is destroyed, therefore this bilirubin diglucuronide can be transported from the bile canaliculi into this blood vessel. So now, the bile bilirubin diglucuronide will be transported into the blood vessel. Okay, so we have conjugated form being transported into the blood vessel and also what will happen is as there is damage to hepatocytes therefore there will be decreased what conjugation so we will have both decreased conjugation as well as the increased amounts of conjugated bilirubin in blood uh, blood vessel so we will see what there will be increased amount of conjugated as well as unconjugated forms in blood so that's about the final type that is the viral hepatitis in which we see the increased amount of both conjugated as well as unconjugated bilirubin. Now we are not going to discuss about the various clinical features of jaundice because we'll discuss that in our medicine classes. For now you should remember this much. This was the basic pathology of jaundice and the destruction of jaundice. Now in our next lecture we'll discuss about the various thalassemias. So please subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon and share my videos. Thank you everyone and have a nice day.